Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. This is the week of April 5, 2021. And this week I've got four topics, actually four really cool topics. The first one is even more information came out on the Air 2S from DJI. So we'll talk about all the things that were uh, released this week. And uh, the, the release of this drone is very imminent, I can tell you that. Uh, Parrot announced that they're starting a bug bounty program. And we'll talk about what a bug bounty program is and kind of what they're trying to uh, accomplish with this. We'll talk about the FA that released uh, actually something really impressive. Their free online training this week for currency uh, purposes. So we'll talk about uh, what happened, how you can take the training if you haven't done that. And then lastly, we'll talk about a Pilot Institute course that we just released. So let's get to it. <laughs> All right, the first thing this week is the Air 2S from DJI that's uh, supposedly right around the corner. Uh, there's been more leaks and uh, you can find all that good information on Drone Excel with uh, Haya and his team. And um, the, the first thing, the first thing is the release date. It looks like April 15 was leaked as the release date. So uh, DJI kind of releases the uh, or, or has the official release information usually with a teaser or something so we'll find out in the next couple of days this is next week i mean this is right around the corner this drone has gone from a rumor two or three weeks ago to being released next week it's like it's just incredible um there is fly more combos photos that have been released it looks like the battery and the controller are pretty much i'm, I'm not going to say the same but they look like the same uh look as the original air 2 and um, the controller looks just like the Air 2 controller. It looks like the controller that we have on the Mini 2 as well. So that's, it looks like maybe DJI is going pretty standard with these controllers right here. Um, there's additional sensors on the top of the drone. The Air 2, the, I'm gonna call it the original Air 2, had sensors in the back, sensors in the front, but no sensors on top. Now it doesn't look like there is any sensors on the side, which is more than likely what they're trying to keep for the Mavic 3 series. The Mavic 2 Pro, the Mavic 2 Zoom have sensors on the side. It doesn't look like we have this, but it looks like a one inch sensor has been confirmed. So one inch CMOS sensor, which would be really close to what we have on the uh, Mavic 2 Pro. Now the Mavic 2 Pro is several years old now. I think it was released in 2018. So um, interesting to see DJI kind of cannibalizing their own uh, drones, uh, you know, their own sales, quite frankly. Uh, my guess is that the Mavic 2 Pro is probably not selling nearly as much, so now they're coming up with something new. And then in preparation, I'm sure, for the Mavic 3 Pro. Uh, if you want more information on this, we had a, a great recording with Haya and Kara on the Pixel Drone Show, our podcast, last week on Tuesday. So if you want more information, we've got about an hour where we chit-chat about uh, DJI's kind of... Uh, what we think they're going to do in the next couple uh, months and then talking about other manufacturers as well so make sure that you go and take a look at that uh, there was a teaser video that you see running in the background right now uh, we can see the one inch sensor we can see the 20 megapixel marking uh, what we don't see on here is the ha uh, Hasselblad uh, marking that we have on the Mavic 2 Pro uh, maybe they're keeping this for the Mavic 3 series who knows uh, it looks like also we have ADS-B available ADS-B N with the AirSense technology from uh, from DJI. So we'll have more information next week again, and, uh, and then we'll keep you posted. As always, go and check dronexcel.co right here for uh, more information as they uncover. It looks like they're posting an article pretty much every single day with new information. So it's kind of exciting. Next thing is Parrot. Parrot is the French manufacturer of uh, drones. They're uh, going with a bug bounty program. And if you're not familiar with the bug bounty program, it's essentially uh, Parrot or any other manufacturer. DJI has been doing this for several years now where they release a portion or all of their uh, code so that um, hackers, white hat hackers, I guess, uh, would can go through it and find if there are any bugs. And typically there's a reward if they found uh, bugs in the system. And um, in this case, they're using a European crowdfunded program to do this. It's a security platform called Yes We Hack. And uh, the, the idea is at first they're going to release their code uh, to a few of the of the, the hackers on that platform privately, and then eventually they're gonna open it up to the entire uh, community, which looks like it's about 11,000 hackers. So uh, their goal is to I'm sure find bugs in the system, but also be transparent on their uh, security behind their drones. Uh, you know, they're, they're producing a blue UAS uh, drone 
And actually, we're going to be talking about the Blue UAS series. If you're not familiar with this, uh, we have a podcast episode coming next week. I know I'm plugging in the podcast, but uh, it's it's kind of my way to talk more, to talk longer, and to bring in on board a bunch of guests, and obviously bring in Haya and Kara as well as our co-host. And uh, so we're bringing uh, David from Drone Analysis, and um, he found out some things about the Blue program. I don't want to talk more about this, but uh, if you are interested, make sure that you go and subscribe to uh, the uh, the drone pixel, uh, the pixel drone show. Okay, next thing was kind of a big thing. We talked about it last week, but uh, the FA finally released its free online training. Uh, people <laughs> people were wondering if it was really actually going to happen because uh, because it's been delayed. It was delayed twice. Now not because of the FA. And and I have to say I have to give the FA a kudos on this training. Um, as as an educator myself, as a training provider, uh, I was actually fairly impressed with the uh, information that they were able to put in here. Now it's missing videos. If you ask me, I'm a video person. I like making those videos. I like teaching using videos. Uh, there was a lot of text in there, but the text was very in depth and I thought the training was uh, very good. So kudos to you guys. If anybody from the EFA is watching, uh, I think, you know, we, we give the EFA a hard time. I think we have to give them uh, the, the, uh, the kudos when they deserve them. The training was interesting. It took me about an hour and a half to go through it. Um, I know I read online some people just decided to take 10 minutes and, and just do the test. Uh, the test is not the goal of this. The, the test is to get um, to confirm that you learned something during the training. Uh, the test is not really graded. It's graded to 100, but you can actually miss questions. They'll tell you that you missed the question and then you can go back and correct it. It's what the FA calls corrected to 100. Uh, it's uh, it's something that we do in, uh, in the private pilot training where we have a solo test, for example, it's corrected to 100. So it's not something new. It's just something new to drone pilots at the moment. Um, I found interesting some of the reactions that I found online. I'm not necessarily very pleased with the, some of the reactions that I saw online of people saying, well, I'll just took the test in 10 minutes and then I'm done now. Um, terrible approach, quite frankly, between you and I. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's not the attitude that we need to have as an industry. This is recurrent training. Just go through it, learn something, and then move on. Uh, you're going to do this every two years. There was a lot of information about new regulation, uh, about flying over people, about remote ID, about flying at night. Uh, if you took 10 minutes to go through the training, you missed all the new stuff, and uh, and you're probably going to be flying out there illegally. Anyway, I'm going to get off my soapbox. Uh, I, I do tend to get annoyed when, uh, when people give our industry a bad reputation. But uh, the training in itself was divided into five different modules. We had an introduction, you had uh, module one, two, and three, and then we had the review and then finally the exam. Uh, the, the, the three modules in the middle, there was one main module that had all of the information. It opened up a new window. So if you go on there and you click on one, it's going to open up a new window. And then uh, in there, there's a new quick introduction. There was uh, aircraft and PIC requirements. And then there was a section about rules for safe UAS operation. And then embedded into this was new regulation for uh, flying at night new regulation for flying over people. So a lot of good information. Uh, uh, tab number two was resources. And then tab number three was a glossary of some of the terms that are being used in there. Now, this is very typical training by the FA uh, on fasafety.gov. This is the, the kind of format that you that I have seen for 20 years now that I've been using fasafety.gov. So uh, nothing new. We thought the website was going to crash. It didn't. So kudos again to the FA. I don't know what they did. I don't know if people spread their training, but it worked. Nobody crashed the server, which was uh, good news. Uh, upon completion of this training, you get a training certificate, a completion certificate, which is proof of currency and also proof that you received the training. Now, you can use this training for two things. You can use this training to fly at night after April 21 without a waiver. Now, if you did the training already, and you're saying, hey, I can go fly at night now, you have to wait until April 21, which is when the FA regulation actually goes in place. Now, if you did the training for currency purposes, you're current. Congratulations. If you did the training on April 6 or after, then uh, you basically have this little piece of paper. It's good for two years, 24 calendar months. And then in 24 calendar months, you're going to have to do the training again. So at the end of April 2023 is when you will be due for your recurrent training. You'll be able to do this again, go online, do it for free, rinse and repeat every two years. So that's kind of uh, the good news right here. So 
Um, I've seen some confusions. I've seen some confusion. I've actually seen, I have two corrections that I want to make. I don't know if they fixed it yet because I can't go back to the training, but the FA mentioned March 16 in one of their slides. It is actually April 21st. They forgot to uh, change when the regulation was uh, pushed back. And then in the category one explanation, there was actually something missing. They missed the fact that you, you cannot have exposed rotating parts for category one. So I want to go over this because this is kind of actually a critical uh, miss on their part. But if you're flying a drone over people under category one after April 21st, the drone has to be under 250 grams with everything attached to it. And it cannot have rotating parts that can cause laceration, which means that it has to be equipped at the moment with prop guards. Your Mavic Mini does not qualify for category one starting April 21st. The reason is when you put the prop guard on top of it, then it makes the drone more than 250 grams, which means that it doesn't qualify as category one anymore. So be careful. This doesn't mean you can just slap on prop guards and then go fly your mini two over people. You do not qualify for that at the moment. Okay. So I just want to clarify that part. Uh, there was something in here that I, th I thought was interesting. Uh, the FA is about to release a new handbook. It's called a UAS operating handbook. Uh, it's going to look very much like the pilot handbook of aeronautical knowledge. If you're a student in my class, we use the P hack for, uh, for training. This is kind of the, the Bible for pilots. This is a, a very good reference document. And it looks like the FA is creating this this new document uh, as the uh, as the US operating handbook. So I'm excited about this. This will be kind of a, a one place stop shop to find information. Um, the the handbook is labeled FAA H83 uh, 8083-24. I know this is the code name, but all FA documents have a code name. Uh, it's not released. Unfortunately, it looks like they had some delays. Uh, it was probably, I'm sure they were expecting to release it on the day the training went live. Uh, on the training, there was actually a lot of references to that document. Uh, I was actually able to get a, a draft version of the document. It looks like it's about 150 pages um, and, and it's really good. From I, I started reading it last night. I'm not done yet, uh, but from what I've seen so far, tons of really good information in there, pretty well organized. So I'm actually pretty pumped about uh, this new document. Okay. Um, some confusion as I've seen about this document, about this, this training, this free online training. Uh, the course in itself is called ALC 677. If you did ALC 515, it is not the proper training. Some people were very confused about part 61. Part 61 became very popular this week because uh, the new training says it is training for non part 61 pilots. Part 61 is the regulation that governs um, issuing certificates for manned aircraft pilots. If you're a manned aircraft pilot, if you have a, a, a private pilot, commercial pilot, airline transport pilot certificate, these are issued under Part 61. So that's what I have. When I started my training as a pilot, uh, I have a commercial pilot license, which is issued under Part 61. So the training that the FA just released, AALC 677, is labeled non-Part 61 pilots because the procedure for Part 61 pilots is, is different. So they decided to issue this, uh, this label. I, I know it's confusing because a lot of Part 107 pilots have no idea what Part 61 is you know, rightfully so. So if you see part 61, if you don't know what it is, chances are you are not certified under part 61. Uh, but if you did the other training for any reason, uh, it's not valid. So make sure you go back and you do ALC 677. I'll put a link down in the description so you can uh, get to it. Uh, the training is not valid for initial training. I'm going to say that again. The free FA online training, ALC 677, is not valid for initial training. This will not make you a remote pilot. This is only for people who have a remote pilot certificate already. Do not use that training to prepare for the FAA exam, the initial exam. It is missing a lot of things, okay? There are a lot of topics that are not in the training that the FAA just released, okay? So if you just study this and then you go to the testing center, chances are you will fail the exam. So make sure that you find another source. Obviously, this is what we do, but find a source for training in addition to this. So. Um, the, the certificate of completion, if you did not get to the point where you have a certificate of completion in your inbox, you are not current yet. You need to have that certificate of completion, save it, 
make a PDF out of it, print it. You can use a PDF to show this document to the FAA to say that you're current, okay? So either the, the paper format or a PDF is fine, uh, electronic version is fine. You still need to have your actual certificate the card with you to prove you cannot use a PDF for that, but you need to do, you need to have a copy of that somewhere. Okay, that's all I'm gonna talk about. I wanted to make sure those confusions were out of the way. And uh, let's talk about the last thing, which is uh, we just released a new course. And it's actually, it's even better. It's a free course. Uh, we have a deep dive series where we go over some drones, we go over the, the user manual, and we just released the deep dive for the DJI FPV. And, uh, and it, took, it took us a while to do this because as you can imagine, there's a lot of information. Uh, I went through the entire manual. Uh, I found things that were not even in the manual and uh, made this course. It's about two and a half hours long. It explains everything you need to know about the drone. So if you bought one, Go in there, register, it's free. Um, and then if you haven't bought one and you're thinking about it, then this is kind of a, it's not a review. I don't really do a, a review of the drone. I do a review of all of the features of the drone. I don't really give you my opinion. I tell you how I fly it. I tell you the settings that I use. Uh, doesn't mean that those are the settings that you have to use, but um, yeah, so go in there. Uh, perfect for anyone who has the drone or wants to get the drone and uh, you'll get all the information. So that's all I have. Like, comment, subscribe. Subscriptions have been going up actually very quickly last uh, couple weeks, so I'm really excited about this. If you have comments, leave them in there. We've got over 100 comments every month now, every week on, uh, on these uh, shows, and I, I love to go in there on Friday. I drink my tea in the morning, and I tend to answer the questions that you guys posted. Uh, the video goes live at 8 a.m. Uh, Eastern, and uh, that's 5 a.m. my time. So by the time I wake up, you guys have watched already and put comments, and, uh, and I, I, I like to do this. I enjoy it. Uh, we have the drone podcast as well, Pixel Drone Show. That's a separate YouTube channel. Make sure you go and check that out. Uh, this week, we're talking to David Benowitz from Drone Analyst, talking about the blue UAS. Last week, we had a show with Just Kara and, uh, and Haya and myself, and we kind of chit-chatted about drones, which is, well, that's what we do, right? It's uh, the fun stuff. So make sure you go check it out. And then also, we have the airplane news update, which is posted at the same time as this news update. So this week, I'm talking about uh, a lot of different things this week, actually. Uh, we're talking about uh, the airline accidents that are on the rise in 2020. We're talking about a large... Uh, uh, hydrogen uh, engine that uh, company in the UK is working on. And then I'm talking about some guidance from the FAA for medical examiners uh, for people that had COVID. So if you're interested in any of these topics, head out to the airplane channel. That's another channel that we have. And then uh, we'll talk about it there. All right, I'm going to shut up. I'll see you guys later. Uh, fly safe and uh, don't be a US hey hole.